It's been a while since we've talked about a Sigma camera, so that's the focal point of today's video. The DB2 mirror. Was that cringy? Sigma lives up to its name with nearly every camera it's released, and a lot of people don't know or didn't know that they even made cameras, at least up until recently with their full frame, more traditional bear style mirrorless lineup in the Elmont Alliance. But before that was the Merrells. These cameras are based off of the earlier Fulvion stack sensors, but the main difference between the two is the resolving power in more megapixels in the newer iterations. You're probably wondering what the heck a Fulvion, Merrill, or even a stack sensor is, right? Well, to understand the Merrill sensor and all of its obscurity, we first have to look at what's currently being used in most cameras today, which is the bear sensor. We'll make this short and sweet. So, a bear sensor records reds, greens, and blues to a single layer or sensor, whereas the Merrill and Fulvion lineup records reds to one sensor, greens to another, and blues to yet another, stacking them on top of each other. In theory, these old Sigma cameras should produce a more filmic and truer to real life color rendition to colors than its more modern and traditional Bayer sensor counterparts. Now inherently there's drawbacks to sensors like this, which is why they're not making them much anymore, but we'll go over that later. Now first let's look at the body. Now it's a bit bigger than the traditional Fulvion cameras. Comparing the two, they took away the flash, but added some new twisty things to help with your manual shooting. Now the body is bigger than the traditional DPs, and bigger body means bigger screen. Being that the Merrill is a little bit newer, that also means that the screen is a little bit better, which does help because neither of these cameras have built-in viewfinders, so you're gonna have to be looking at your screen to compose your shots. But if we're on the topic of the screen, just know that it's still an old camera and it could be hard to see, especially when you're using it in direct sunlight. one handed the Merrill is completely possible if you're looking to use this as your incognito urban street shooter, and it's not an eye-turning camera in the best sense. If you're a gear nerd and you're looking to pick up a Sigma camera, you're probably wanting it for two main reasons, and that's the weird sensor and the sharp lenses that Sigma is known for at least in recent times. And the Merrill's no different. The lens on this is tack sharp, and I find it usable across all apertures. The camera has a pretty big sensor, which is the equivalent to an APS-C size. And the lens is a 30 millimeter f2.8, which would make it about 45 millimeters to a full frame equivalent. The Merrill sensor is one of a kind, producing incredible imaging, mature to real life colors, and underrated resolving power, in my opinion. Now it claims 46 megapixels, but really it's three 15-ish megapixel sensors sandwiched together. So you can take that any way you want, but the Merrells don't use an anti-aliasing filter, which a lot of modern cameras do. AA filters are used on Bayer sensors to prevent distortion, color banding, and weird artifacts from showing up on your image. And the need for these is very polarizing in the photog world. And although there is those benefits of having an AA filter, one objective drawback is your photos tend to be a little less sharp than they would be without. So the Merrill without it may not be a true 45 megapixel camera, but one thing is for certain, the imaging is incredibly sharp. Now pair the sensor with Sigma sharp lenses and color philosophy, you should have the perfect camera, right? Let's talk about some drawbacks of the DP2 or the Merrells at large and start with the files. When shooting with this Sigma camera or any of their Fulvion, Merrill, or stack sensors at large, you're gonna notice how painstakingly slow the entire process is across the board. In the field, this camera has to think and process after each and every shot, which could take a few seconds. On top of that, many photogs will have to succumb to a multi-step process when transferring and converting Sigma's 
unreadable X3F files to something that Adobe or the editing program of your choice can digest. Sigma does offer on their website a free program which allows users of these cameras to convert the X3F files to TIFFs which are digestible in Adobe programs, but it does add a significant amount of time to people's workflows if they're shooting in RAW. That said, Sigma's JPEGs coming from the Merrill are simply mint. And in fact, all of the images you see, unless specified otherwise, are just JPEGs shot straight out of the camera. So just know speed in general is just an issue with the Merrill's or Sigma sensors at large. If you're a JPEG shooter, you should be A-OK -okay for the most part. Another drawback of the Merrill is the battery life. Now, Sigma claims that you can get 90 shots out of this before succumbing to battery death, but I find it dying at about 50 to 60. Either way, 90 is pretty darn low, right? So just prepare to carry around a couple batteries and shoot it. Now, personal con for me is the body. Now, I understand the allure of something like this because you can slip it into your pockets pretty darn easily if your pockets are big enough because there's no rubber gaskets to worry about and it's a pretty plasticky camera so it doesn't feel so weighty in the hands even though it is pretty big however i'm just not a big fan of the stippling and the brick design because i feel like i'm gonna drop it almost every time i hold it and in fact i did and i almost lost this camera to lake superior on a couple occasions the premium plasticky feeling body just isn't for me with its light amount of stippling to keep it in my hands but that's just my opinion and there's workarounds for it. The focusing on this camera isn't terribly great either. Only having nine focusing points on a contrast based system. So expect some hunting. Surprisingly, you can get shots in low light. But speaking of, I wouldn't push the Merrill past ISO 800 unless you like that grainy gritty lamography look. These cameras just flourish when there's bright lights and a low ISO. It's always worth mentioning the drawbacks, but not to dwell on them. None of the negatives about this camera are game breaking things to me. And they all can be worked around without much of a wag of a tail at all. Honestly, my real con to this camera is the puny battery and the battery life. But hey, I'll just carry around extras, right? I know a lot of YouTubers liken this camera to shooting on film or medium format because of the slow speed and developing of the <laughs> digital image. But for me, it's more like fishing. It's a slow process that forces me to think. So either buy this camera or go fishing, I guess. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Instagram, <coughs> Matt's Notes. Thank you. Bye-bye.